Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of Gina's Gems. I'm here with two very special guests today. Uh, Andrew Brownstein, one of our regional practice leaders, who's generally quite camera shy, but twisted his arm to be here today. And Ron Gura. Only the... for you, Gina. <laughs> Thank you. Ron Gura, the founder and CEO of Empathy, which is a tool for employees as they navigate bereavement and loss of a loved one. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you both for being here. Today's topic is one that is near and dear to all three of us. Uh, when we look at how to support employees in their time of need, bereavement support uh, is high on the list for employers. So let's start with you, Andrew. Can you just share some background on bereavement as a leave? Yeah, no, absolutely. And first and foremost, Gina, thanks for having us to discuss this important topic. So we recently conducted one of our large biannual surveys, and one of the focus points of it was bereavement. On the heels of COVID and from the lens of diversity, equity, inclusion, and offering flexible benefits, bereavement has been a very topical leave of absence in this space. So we're starting to see employers as the survey dictated, and again, the focus was really on the large employer community as defined by over 5,000 employees, we're starting to see quite a shift in this. And really, the shifts are in two spaces. So one, employers are starting to extend the duration of leave. We're starting to see, say, two to four weeks of a primary uh, covered individual being more of a standard as it relates to some progressive employers, especially if you're thinking about like professional services, high tech, finance, et cetera. And in addition, especially if you look at it from a DE&I lens, the expansion of a definition of covered individual. We're seeing employers align with, say, a loved one definition. So it's really not on the onus of the employer to define what somebody else means to one of their colleagues or employees. So this is a space that uh, continues to trend and hence why we're having this conversation here. Right, and 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 that um, need in the large employer market really aligns nicely with what you do, Ron. So maybe you could share a little bit about Empathy's mission. Of course, and thanks for having me. Um, for us, our mission is to help families deal with loss. Empathy is that friend you wish you had when you lose a loved one. It's that knowledgeable, um, friendly neighbor that happens to be an estate lawyer, but maybe also a social worker that can really help you save time and money and stress when the inevitable happens. We see the exact same trends that Andrew is talking about. People are thinking about miscarriage. People are thinking about um, infant loss. People are thinking about any type of loss and as the employee defines it, and they want to shift from words to action. They want to shift from sympathy and condolences to empathy and product. So that's where we come in. Um, we're basically a mix of a headspace for grief with a tool tax for estate settlement. Our job is to help with the ceremony, the probate, the estate tax, the grief support. And we do it with a combination of technology, and service. We let machines do what machines are really good at, like automations, reminders, and pre-filling forms. And we let people do what people are good at, like showing up and being compassionate and being on the other side of the line. That's perfect. Thank you for, for framing that. And, and given that um, and tied to what we're seeing, obviously, with our clients, we decided to um, really, you guys inspired us to launch this new initiative when we partnered together to launch something called Moments That Matter. Um, and the first in the series was developed in in uh, conjunction with empathy. So Andrew, can you share more about what we did on that? Yeah, absolutely. And this was really a collaborative effort between uh, Ron and his colleagues at Ep Empathy and MMA ADL. So really what we wanted to do is we acknowledged the fact that on the heels of our larger survey, there were a couple topics that were really trending and evolving with bereavement being one of them. So we wanted to start with that. And really what we wanted to create is we wanted to create a recognition platform for employers to showcase all the great things that they're doing in this space while simultaneously providing employers the most up-to-date and progressive benchmark statistics that are available in the marketplace today. So we were pretty excited with how it turned out. We had uh, a little bit over 30 large progressive employers. And again, it was a targeted initiative with some that were able to be called out and recognized within 
the uh, Moments That Matter report itself. So if you're interested in a copy of the report, by all means, um, check our ADL website, which Gina can certainly provide a plug to, and we'd be happy to have a conversation as it relates to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we know, obviously, bereavement support is great for employees who need to take leave. But Ron, what happens um, after the fact? What about after the fact when an employee is returning to work? Well, I think we need to to, to understand that it takes a, it takes a while. Uh, even when we give people a few days of bereavement leave or a few weeks, if you're at the top 1% of the companies that MMA are, are serving, um, look, it's an 18 months median to wind down the affairs of a loved one. It takes hundreds of hours of work. And that's even before we start thinking about grief that really has no timeline and very individual. So what we see is very important is continuity of care. Uh, continuity of care between your caregiving support to your bereavement care support, and then continuity of care between your bereavement care to what happens when the employee is able to gradually bring his whole self back to work. What about estate settlement? What about winding down the affairs completely? What about manager support to help people understand how to come back and what to expect and colleagues knowing that it's not always the right thing to do to to do things for me when I'm away because I want to feel important and needed. And I'm, I'm really excited to get back to my job as soon as I can. And for others, it's actually a complete cut when they, when they need a chance and opportunity to bring, uh, to get their self up and running again. So providing those tools to help understand that this is not a one and done, and it has to be a personalized journey. Managers need to talk with the employees and um, technology and services and offerings like us and others have to be personalized for the exact needs of the case. Is it, uh, are you the executor or not? Are you uh, close to that person or not? By the way, you define it. Uh, are you Muslim or Jewish or Christian? Are you in Arizona or New Jersey? Do you have five siblings or not? It differs. And nobody wants to be an expert in winding down the efforts. This is not new. It's not headspace. It's not audible. Nobody's trying to get better at this. People are trying to get it over with and back at their whole self. So it's our job, I think, as employers and leaders and benefits providers to help people bring their whole self back. Yep. I love that. And we do try to help our, uh, our clients do that for their employees. So thank you both for being here today, sharing your insight and wisdom on a really important and topical benefit. For those of you watching, please reach out to any one of us to learn more about our approach as well as preferred offerings for our shared clients. And we will see you in a few weeks for our next gem. Thanks guys. Thanks for having us.